Okay, hello everyone. Uh, first up, I want to just uh, warn everybody that this is not going to be a particularly exciting video, but I thought it might be one worth making uh, based on some of my experiences in the past building engines. And we've got here, this is for the JAP 250 engine. We've got a cylinder barrel, uh, it's all nicely <coughs> sort of bored and honed. I'm not quite sure. What size this is on, it came with the bits ready for me to assemble and this new piston which appears to be out of some kind of Japanese bike. It's got art on it which I see a lot on Honda pistons although the owner tells me it might be a Suzuki piston. Um, I've seen fewer of those to know but uh, I think it's out of a modern Japanese machine of some sort anyway. And what we've got here I'll try and do it this way round actually, hold this in my left hand, but we've got cold, we've got a tight four thousandths of an inch piston to bore clearance. It is quite a tight four, but uh, I could push the piston and the feeler gauge blade right down if I chose to. So that's a cold clearance of four thousandths of an inch maximum. Now I can drop the piston straight through the bore. Obviously I've got no rings on it. I've gapped the rings and the gaps are all good. They're as I would want. So the piston drops through that bore nice and easily. But what I learned when I was um, working on an AJS 250, a pre-war one, and admittedly that had proper sort of AJS pre-war 250 piston in it so we might have to consider expansion rates. I found that machine had a tendency to try and tighten up and did so a few times and I kept honing the bore and where I'd get score marks on the piston I'd sort of get a very fine flat file and ease those areas and we ended up with an engine that ran very well when it was warm and performed well but starting it up cold it sounded really clattery um, there was a lot of piston slap obviously because of the clearance that the piston needed in the cast iron cylinder now, this is a cast iron cylinder alloy cylinders seem to be less troublesome uh, from my own experience on this sort of front where presumably as the piston warms up and the barrel warms up even with an iron liner the aluminium cooling fins and jacket on the barrel can expand quicker and more than cast iron ones because when you think about it each of these fins is a ring of cast iron almost clamping around a bore if you like and these have also got to warm up and expand before things when they reach their working temperatures all stabilize to the um, levels of expansion that they're going to be at. Now, if you've got this in an alloy cylinder, I think what would happen is that the cast iron liner would also warm up more quickly within the alloy bore because you've got these cast iron fins taking time to warm up and expand, whereas in the alloy one, perhaps they warm up and expand more quickly. This is all my theory, I'm no scientist or anything, but I'm just talking from experience. And I think what happens is, if you've got an aluminium piston in a cast iron barrel, complete with cast iron fins, the expansion rate is obviously gonna be lower, but it's also the time for it to expand is going to be greater so you really need to warm especially a newly built engine up very carefully indeed and if you want a fast warm up and get away quickly you're going to want a little bit more piston to bore clearance I would think but anyway we can see cold liner cold barrel cold piston we've got four thou piston to bore clearance measured four to aft on the piston skirt and the piston drops through quite easily. Now I'm probably going to scorch my hands here in a moment but I've got this heat gun and this is the boring bit. Now I'm going to do it in real time, there'll be no editing or cutting bits out. 
bear with me. Maybe go and put your kettle on, make a cup of coffee or tea or light a cigarette, roll a cigarette or something. We'll get this piston warmed up and then I'll offer it up to the bore again. I'll probably even offer it up head first because I doubt that it's going to go dropping all the way through, especially skirt first. So imagine that you started the engine up now and it's running and all those explosions above the piston, those hot explosions are warming it up very rapidly but the cylinder barrel is taking much longer to soak up any heat and expand to any degree but the piston has got very hot very quickly and has already expanded. Now that wasn't exactly a lifetime. Let's see, put that somewhere where it's not going to melt anything. Okay, and we'll offer this piston up to the bore, and I'm going to drop it in upside down, small diameter first. There we are, look at that, it's stuck. Now, if we keep an eye on this, probably before long, it will suddenly drop down the bore. Right, here we go. If I held the cylinder vertical it would probably drop like a stone already but I'm sure it will carry on moving. I've got it tilted just to sort of demonstrate. Here it goes. Creeping all the time. Here we go, more movement now. You can see that. There we are. Probably by now if I straighten up the cylinder and lift it. There we are, the piston's gone through. Now it's cooled down quite a lot, it's still hot, but I can just about hold it with my bare hands again. You see that dropping straight through. So, if we consider that this is all put together as an engine ready to run. There we are, it's going in skirt first. Now it certainly wouldn't have done that when it was as warm as I made it before. We've got to allow that this engine, when it's rebuilt, as it is with the 4 thou piston to bore clearance, is going to need careful warming up and running in. The other alternative, of course, is to hone the cylinder bore out and maybe give about um, five or even six thousandths of an inch clearance. And then you probably find that you could start it up and wring its neck almost straight away. But at the cost, possibly, of a little bit of performance due to the sloppier pit fit of the piston and the rings in the bore. So I'm going to put this together as it is and just recommend to the owner that he runs the carburetor settings, certainly the needle, on a slightly rich or richer than ideal setting to start with. Perhaps just a dash of oil or light lubricant in the fuel nothing no great percentage at all because obviously if you add oil to uh, fuel it actually weakens the fuel air mixture just through there being a certain volume of oil in that charge of fuel mixed with the air so again a weaker mixture then can raise temperatures so just a little splash of oil um, a rich needle position and just try and uh, treat the engine with a bit of respect initially and uh, this one should probably be a good one. Uh, it is possible I found with um, some engines that have, I've suspected of being rather tight to give them uphill work preferably on a stretch of road that's uh, quiet enough to do it and I've been able to feel sometimes there's that slight moment and you've only got perhaps a split second or so where you might feel a loss of power and if you can get the clutch in and throttle off chances are if the engine doesn't stop you might be able to coast to a halt and find the engine still ticking over and um, you can just pause for a couple of seconds and then uh, get going gently again and repeating that sort of process can be a fast way of running an engine in although get it wrong and it can be a fast way of ruining it so uh, the choice is yours on that one folks anyway the clearances and tolerances are all good, but I'm going to advise the owner that this is going to need some careful running in before 
he goes enjoying the full performance of it. So I just thought I'd demonstrate with the hot air gun there. And we've seen the effect it can have when you get the piston warming up too rapidly before the cylinder barrel has followed suit. Um, hopefully that might have been of interest to somebody.